people complaining about the ending. Like that Aaron died for nothing. I, that really bothers me. Like I just don't get that. I don't get why people have a problem with that. Like what do you mean he died for nothing? Or, or all of that was for nothing. That does not make fucking sense to me at all. Attack on Titan has officially come to an end. And I feel like it's fitting. Why is he using this picture? You know what you're doing, GB. You know exactly what you're doing. Kind of have this image on screen first for this video. Because ever since the manga came to a close, this image in the manga, and now I see it for the foreseeable future for the anime, <laughs> it'll be the, one of the most memed scenes. Yo, oh, yeah, this is going to be as meme as it gets. Definitely. But before I get into that, get used to this I fucking picture. That. When I finished the manga of Attack on Titan a few years back, gonna be completely blunt, I hated it. Ooh. Hey, he hated it. Okay, okay, he's one of you. He's one of you! I hated the ending. I Why are, yeah, 1.5 dislikes? This is fucking corny, man. This guy is so passionate about anime. He is who I'm gonna listen to. I'm gonna listen to him. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I'm gonna genuinely like this or dislike it. Let's see. I'm gonna I be one of you guys. On it. I talked about it when the ending first came out, and then I talked about it a few weeks later when there was an extra eight pages added, and I said I hated it even more than I did the original <laughs> ending because of some oh, of the shit. added content just was not good. It it gave way more question marks and basically made it to where Aaron's entire journey throughout the story was pretty much for nothing it was worthless and everything that the story i'm waiting for a butt you know the way he's talking sounds like there's a butt coming mounted to basically was pointless that is pretty much how i felt about the conclusion of the yeah. manga but three years back when the final chapter and its extra pages came out so obviously it's been a long time since that happened and i've had a long time to really sit on my feelings, my thoughts of Attack on Titan, my journey throughout the anime, my journey of watching these final episodes or the final chapters as, you know, Crunchyroll calls, or calls them on this site, you know, I've had a long time to really think about it and think about how I truly felt about the conclusion, the ending, and up to this very moment, like, or up to this, you know, day when, you know, before I watched this episode, my thoughts still remained very firm. For okay. instance, I truly believed that, uh, I didn't like Attack on Titan's ending. Well, that's fine. I mean, I can't say anything because I never read the manga. I never, like, I've never read it. I don't know the complaints. Like, I don't know why people are complaining and don't like it. Like, I don't know that stuff. So that's, I can't say anything about that. He read the manga, he read to the end, and didn't like it. And so I went into this episode pretty much knowing that it would be all downhill around this part of the episode like i knew that <laughs> oh that's the part not really liking the content and the way the story was going to evolve because of just certain events that happened and so i had already some bias against the ending in this episode but he hates the ending if he's able to watch this ending and appreciate it it tells you something about his character regardless of that i do also want to make a disclaimer that uh, before I even began, he said, okay, "But oh yeah, I, I also wanted to respect the legacy." And I even made this very clear in the video I made like a week ago when the final trailer came out. I made it very clear that even if, let's say, I came to hate the ending of the anime of Attack on Titan, that I would respect the legacy of what Attack on Titan has done for the anime industry. And the that's how I see it. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like the whole take of just because the ending sucks means their entire story sucks is such a stupid take i'm not saying he's saying that i'm saying a lot of people say that it's like game of thrones i compare attack on titan to game of thrones because or i used to until i saw the ending of attack on titan but with game of thrones everybody loved the fucking series until the last season the last season happens it didn't go the right way i hated it doesn't mean i hate game of thrones i just hated the season just because i hate the ending doesn't mean i hate the journey you know what i mean what does hunter hunter teach you it's about the journey. It's not about the destination. It's not about landing. Though the ending would solidify it as a masterpiece. You know what I mean? But I wouldn't call Game of Thrones a masterpiece because the ending wasn't that great. But still, I still love Game of Thrones. Manga industry. It's been you can very still love something. It is shaped just because so the ending, just because the destination wasn't worth it, doesn't mean the journey wasn't. New anime and manga, light novels, it will have an impact for the. And wait, wait, wait! I'm gonna continue this. I know. I keep pausing. I won't pause this much. I promise. Imagine One Piece ends, and the ending sucks. We find out the One Piece is uh, it's Sanji. 
what it's at what one piece sucks now it's the finding the one piece the goal of the, the 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 i mean i know what you i know what you're saying you're only on level 200 what are you talking about if the ending sucks would the whole journey be worthless people are saying yes oh, really i don't know man i don't know if the series is, is this fucking good until y'all say it's even better now with egghead and shit then it's even better now like it's getting great and great I, 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 I kind of want the ending to suck. I want to see what people would say. I want to see what... Because nobody's going to be happy. One Piece ends, I promise you there's going to be people that don't like it. They're going to fucking hate it. I promise you. I promise you. No matter how it goes, people are going to hate it and they're going to say the series sucks. It didn't, wait, it didn't end the way... It's not going to end the way everybody wants it to end. I can't wait. Foreseeable future and regardless of just meme culture... It will be discussed, analyzed, and broken apart for decades. It is yep. going to be something that is going to look be, be looked back upon like 10 to 20 years from now, and people are going to discuss this series, ripping it apart, and even talking about the ending, saying it was a good ending, saying it's a bad ending, it was a neutral ending, whatever. You know, there's going to be a lot of videos, a lot of discussion around it, which just goes to show that it really is a legendary series yep. that is or has made an impact on culture itself, at least for anime and manga. So... With that said, that picture how do I feel about so... this final episode? <laughs> All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's, here we go. Let's, um, let's, let's clear it. Come on. So, Come on, QD reviews. I've already made it abundantly clear before I even started this. I had some bias towards it. I left this episode happier than how I left the manga. There we go. He's probably still going to say something. Like, he still doesn't agree with the ending, but still, he left happier. So the anime did a better service than the manga did for him. And I think that anyone that knew how harsh I was with my reviews on the manga's ending can probably say that's very high praise. That is very high praise that I even remotely Conclusion, say it sucks I less. left this anime <laughs> with, like, I would bump it up from, like, how I had a 4 out of 10 or a 5 out of 10. To a 7. Probably a 7. Or even an eight. It I didn't. Was I didn't rewatch this. I didn't watch this. Good this isn't pre-watched. I was just Definitely guessing. I was in his brain. The staff and the voice acting and all that that worked on this episode, but legit, from a four to a seven, that's from a bad to a good. That's pretty good. Story elements, even some of the flaws I have with the story, <laughs> was enhanced and more understandable, digestible, and changed a little bit to make it more acceptable. For the audience that watched this and so let's uh -huh. let's give a good part here this scene is very iconic and yes. let's get into this since i've had it on the screen already let's for a get while. into it this scene buddy is iconic because aaron breaks down and it's basically i don't want her to find someone i don't want it i don't want her and all that like i don't want her to do that and this i don't want her to suck cock well too bad she does the entire scene is Aaron showing weakness at the final moments of like, I don't want to die, which is understandable, but he's like, I don't want to die, I don't want, uh, you know, Mikasa to move on, I want her to love me, I, you know, want to love her, I want her to be with me, he's just saying all these feelings, and it just, it I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, if I die, I don't want Liv to find love. If you die tomorrow, I would be distraught for the rest of my life. Would you I find would love? I not go looking for another life partner. Because whatever happens next, when we die, wherever we go, I don't know. But all I know is I want to be there with you. There is no reason for me to find another love. I have the love of my life. I don't need another one. Exactly. There is not another one. I there feel the no same way. If I Liv were to die tomorrow, you bet your asshole, I am not ever going to go looking for somebody else. I am I'm probably either hey, going to kill myself. Or be live the rest of my life just waiting to meet her again. I'm not going to find something. There is nobody else. She's my life. That's why I'm with her is because she's my life partner. There is no cap. I'm being fucking honest. I wouldn't be able to. That's how I am. I've never cheated. I've never done shit like that in my life. So I, I, I understand, Aaron. It is an incredible whiplash of emotions because me, the I entire theme nothing. of this episode is just Aaron is this unstoppable force that is giving his friends a chance. But overall, it's just like he's going to conclude his job. He is going to kill off humanity. He is going to 100% wipe out the opposing force because that is the only way to save his friends, to save Paradise Island. That was his objective, at least before we got to the scene and we found out a little bit more about it and how you'd be stopped, etc. The point of the matter is, is that everything up to this very moment, these final moments of, you know, the series, you were under the impression that Aaron was just this stone-cold person that was just driven. He has to move forward, driven by conviction, and he needed to finish his job. Okay. 
And yeah. so when you get to this scene, and the reason why a lot of people dislike the scene is because it is a whiplash. It is a straight whiplash of emotions. And even if this goes into how Aaron's character was a few seasons back, the thing is, is that this is an Aaron that's been hardened by so many deaths. So many people has died, and he has chosen to let die, that it also comes off very like, why are you doing this? Why are you crying or being emotional at this moment after everything you have done? And I'll talk about that in a second. But the point is, is I'm trying to get into the psyche of why people dislike this scene. It is. It's like I know I I I have, I I know where he's gonna go with this, but y'all already know how I feel about that whole thing. Like Aaron's breakdown was literally Aaron. Like that's as Aaron as it got. That's the Aaron we knew for like the eighty percent of the fucking show, maybe even ninety percent. Nah, I would say like 80, maybe even like 75 to 80, 80 percent of the show. That's a, that's the end room we fucking knew, bro. It was it was it was a child run, running with power and, and and lashing out and shit. It's a huge whiplash, and it just it comes off like why why all of a sudden is Aaron breaking as a character after he's just done so many atrocities? And I mean, at this point in time, basically he's killed so many millions of people by trampling them with the rumbling so it's just like everything considered it's like holy crap man like th this is not the time to be breaking down crying when you've already set in motion your entire plan and already given up at this point to even changing anything so it's just like why why do this but anyways enough with that the point of the matter is is that right, this scene in particular i didn't always have a huge issue with it. like i had problems with him not wanting mikasa to move on it was very selfish yes especially for a but he is selfish he is selfish that's the thing like we don't have to agree with him we don't have to agree with characters but that's the point like we don't have to agree with that that's who he is that's Aaron. he's a fucking selfish character for a man you know that's very selfless and kind of putting his life on the line and willing to die to, you know, unite paradise and, you know, save everyone, all of his friends and family. You know, he's a very selfless person, technically, all things considered up to this point. So it was a very... I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't say he's selfless. Like, he's selfless. Be I he's selfish when it comes to his friends. His, his, he, that's all he cares about. You know what? Like, being being selfless would mean that that, like... I don't know. Like, I, I, I think he's a selfish character. I don't think he's selfless. He's a child. That's honestly how I see Aaron. I've always seen him as self. I don't think he's selfless at, at all. I don't think that, that describes his character at all. Just because he doesn't, like, care about himself and whatever. He just cares about this group. That's all. He's selfish in regards to the group compared to the world. Like, out of field things, like, he's acting very selfish, so to speak. You know, just like, oh, I want Mikasa to basically never forget about me after my death. It's just like, bro, what the hell? But um, anyways, th this is not the scene that I legitimately had most problems with. The scene I had with after this is when he starts talking to Armin and he starts saying that, you know, like, oh, uh, I don't want to leave Mikasa or any of you and all that. And th this anime episode starts talking about how Aaron and Armin are going to go to hell. Like, they are legitimately, they will go to hell together. For instance, when Aaron dies, he's probably going to a bad place, and Armin will probably follow him into that abyss, because they both have killed countless people. Technically, in the, the way this anime episode explains it, is that Armin set Aaron on this path. Even if Aaron kind of made a lot of decisions on his own to get the Titans, the Founding Titan, etc., Armin still tries to take responsibility. Armin blamed himself for what Aaron's become. It was inevitable, bro. Armin didn't have to do anything. Aaron was becoming or landing exactly where he landed. The destination was inevitable. Which is a huge improvement to his character, showcasing that, you know, he is taking responsibility of everything after, you know, Erwin died and all that. And he's like, yeah, you know, I have obviously condemned a lot of people to death as well. I'm just as responsible for the rumbling as you are, Aaron. And so we'll both go to hell together. And organically speaking, this episode conveys that very well. And now you're probably wondering, why do I have a problem with this? Well, let's uh, let's show you the manga. So the manga right, equivalent of this, and this is the chapter, okay? This is legit the chapter of the manga, the final chapter with the extra... This is like my first time seeing some of this shit. Except for that one panel when he mentions the whole genocide thing. This is my first time seeing this shit. ...pages and all that. I want to show you this scene. So this... Don't watch Chibi, man. He defends pedophilia. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, oh, God. It's like people were so against me doing videos with Chibi and like Rev because of their takes on like on girls in anime. And I want y'all to fucking know I don't give a fuck about that. 
I do not care about the lolly shit. I don't care. They are drawings. If one of these two decided to, to, to fangirl over a character that was like a teenager in an anime, whatever, man. What the who the fuck cares? That's my take on it. I purposely want to do a series with Chibi now and Rev. I don't care. Am I a file for liking Mashuko Tensai? Like, is he a file for liking it? He's not defending pedophile, man. He's an anime review channel. He reviews anime. What does this have to do with the real world? Nami's hot. What am I, a pedophile now? Liv finds at, like, characters hot. Is she a pedophile? I don't give a fuck. Like, you know how many fucking comments I got on that video with Rev and Chibi, the collab video, where they were fucking, like, telling me, oh, you're working with a pedophile. Oh, wait, wait, you're telling me they touch kids in real life? Oh, no, it was about anime drama. The fuck? These people need to touch grass and ass. This was in the manga. And this is the, the actual official dialogue. If you look here, Armin says this to Aaron. It, it, read it from, you know, right to left. And it... I don't give a fuck what age Nami is, bro. They, they would have wrote her to be like 13, 14, 15. You see what she looks like? It doesn't take, uh, like, a lot of... She's a drawing! ...to understand what is wrong with this dialogue. It's just, it's like, for one... Armin is pawning off all the responsibility and everything, all the weight and burden of the world over to Aaron. That's literally how it feels, how it is conveyed to the audience, that he's throwing all the deaths and everything onto Aaron's shoulders. That This is how the manga was. This was the actual final chapter of the manga of Attack on Titan. And so this stung a lot of people. It stung a lot of people. It's like, why would Armin be like, oh, thank you for killing so many people for our sakes. It just, it felt like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, Once yeah. Let's get another yeah. whiplash of just a When I saw that panel, like, I said the same shit. Y'all saw my reaction like, to that. He wasn't really trying to take responsibility. And on the top of that, it was just like, oh, you know, I'm fine with people dying. It's just like, bro, what? It, it was really messed up. It was a legitimately messed up sequence here with all things considered when you factor in. Armin here tried to calm down Aaron. He doesn't mean it in a literal sense in my opinion and in the anime armin says this still so i don't know why he needed the manga panel for it i don't he didn't say this in the anime i mean he didn't word it like this everything with armin's character and you know aaron's character and erwin and all that and just what armin's been doing it's just they it felt very out of place so when you see this happen in the anime they obviously don't have that line like you watch the scene again for yourself. They do not have this. No. And this is a meme scene as well. People have mean the hell like out of the, these Like, this, this, this happens. Like, this scene happens, but not these this wording. Not 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 what they're saying in this specific panel. But this scene happens. Because of this. But uh, it is not in the anime. So they completely cut that. Changed it into basically Armin accepting that he will go to hell too with Eren. And so it comes off more organically. So they yeah, fixed yeah. a huge issue that a lot of people had with Armin and Aaron's character with this little exchange. It's a huge improvement that definitely made the episode a lot more enjoyable to me. And once again, I went into this episode very, very biased to a degree. I'm not even going to lie. I'm not even going to try to sugarcoat it. <laughs> so the fact that I think that it's much better. That's a big deal. It won me over. Yeah. But I think that's a big deal. Things. The final sequence is another contender I complained about in the uh, All right, the manga. this is when what I'm interested in. When I was the mangas, you know, the final chapter and all that. This yeah. happens in the manga? Like, this whole sequence, this credit sequence where they show what happens, like, hundreds and years and everything, this this happens in the manga, too? They show all that? That's not, like, an anime exclu- Oh, all right, yeah? So all right. We saw at the end, and here I'll show you. Basically, if you come down here and you look, the final moments of the manga, you see, like, the flash- uh, Okay, yeah. Where you nice, see, nice. you know, an old Mikasa and whoever she married with kids, etc. And it's very clear it's John. It's very obvious. Yeah, that's John. obviously John. Oh, wait. that That's- I mean, it- does that really mean maybe he's just with her? I mean, it's implied with this picture, but it's interpretation. Like, you could just see that as a friend going with her. But you could also say that's his son. I don't know. I don't know. And you see the kid and all that, and visiting Aaron's grave, and you see construction. That's not him. <laughs> it is him. Construction being done to Paradise Island. You know, the place is doing a lot better. And as you can see, time passes a little bit, and the buildings, they, they get blown up. Yeah. And then you see destruction. And basically, it's like, oh... So, it just, oh, and probably like 20 years, 10 years, they rebuilt and they came back and killed all of Paradise. It's like, really? So, it pretty much made everything just like, so Aaron 
should have finished everyone off. Flock was right as well, and it's just like they really should have annihilated the other side. Dark ending, but, you know, it, that was the point that was being made here. It just, you know, our characters all died, and Aaron, you know, basically backed out and cried out and didn't finish the job. This was the original conclusion of the manga, as you can see here. So let's shift over to the anime. You look to the anime here, I'm going to just let you see it. You, you you can easily see with the final sequence of events here that um, you, you can see the weapons and stuff being used, but the buildings are way more futuristic. It yeah, it looked like cyberpunk. This looked better than our fucking world, man. This looks like a thousand, like 300 years from our future, 2023. This looks like, this looks like 2,300. It is 100% more futuristic, and you see the skyscrapers being built with these credit scenes. It basically showcases that a lot more time passed in comparison to the manga. In the manga, these look like typical skyscrapers that you'd see in like 20, 20 the like two, year 2000, 2001, 2005. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this is not necessarily something that is futuristic. It looks like modern day. I understand that in the manga sense, like 20, this looks like how many years after like Attack on Titan, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't look like what the, what the anime ending looked like, where it looked like it was fucking cyberpunk, like thousands of years into the future. Like, yeah, things are going to happen, but still it doesn't even matter. Like five years from Attack on Titan, even at a three year time jump, shit could have happened. There's a whole world out there. What if one, one person around the world, like, like a thousand miles uh, another way decided to bomb them, you know what I mean? We're currently at. And technically, Attack on Titan, if we had to consider where its story was taking place, was probably in the 1930s, 1940s. So it is obviously still a gap, but it's like, really, we knew there was a lot of advancement in the world outside of Paradise Island. So it's like, all things considered, their technology was already pretty advanced. Yeah. So it's like, when you look at this... It's like, it doesn't come off right. It feels like... I don't see the criticism behind it. I'm not talking about him. But I do not see the... Like, I understand maybe the whole... I don't even understand that scene with Aaron. Like, like talking to Armin and stuff. But I definitely, 100% do not understand this whole argument with people complaining about the ending. Like, that Aaron died for nothing. I, that really bothers me. Like, I just don't get that. I don't get why people have a problem with that. Like, what do you mean he died for nothing? Or, or all of that was for nothing? That does not make fucking sense to me at all. It doesn't make sense to me. Maybe they only rebuilt for maybe 10 to 20 years and that was it. But when you look at, you know, the anime, it's very clear, like, 100 or even more so years passed until they came back. And the like, I'm going to give you an example right now, man. Let's say, let's say um, a major terrorist was alive right now and I killed him, right? All right. What does that mean? Peace for the next 10 years? Bro, that's not even peace for the next five minutes. I could have spent my whole life hunting down that terrorist. Five minutes later, another one's born or another guy decides to do something else. Does that mean me stopping that one terror? Does that mean that means nothing? No, it doesn't. That, that, that means a lot. That means a lot. It's just inevitable. It just happens. It's life. It's a cycle. It happens over and over and over again. That's exactly what Attack on Titan did. Just because Eren died or just because Eren does something doesn't mean that it, um, something else isn't going to happen. He's not God. You know what I mean? Like, it, even so. Conflict that happens here probably isn't even completely affiliated with, like, Ymir and the Titans. It's I love how we're talking about all this, and then this dude comes and chat says, when are you watching Naruto? <laughs> just affiliated with probably, you know, other reasons, etc. You know, it could be oil, whatever. It doesn't matter. The point is, is that, you know, the way the episode, the ending of the episode conveys it, is that it is not completely people just taking vengeance against Aaron and the rumbling. Yeah. It, there's probably a part of that, but there's enough time that passed that a lot of the old generation has probably forgotten. So yeah, that, I, I feel like the anime, once again, it corrected another issue because the manga conveys it like it's only been 10 years. And I don't even mind the manga. The manga makes just as much sense as the anime. Time doesn't matter. This, they should have, they could have showed a picture from a day later after the rumbling and it was just went back to shit. It would still make sense. A lot of people that survived from that 20% is going to be angry. But if you convey it to where like- I like the anime version past, way better. I'm going to admit then that. Then most of the old generation that was a part of the rumbling has just forgotten. So they yeah. wouldn't really even know the pain of it. And so, yeah. Anyways, that was corrected. But now it is time to whiplash into the negative. So, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. 
The things that this episode did not fix, and I think that is very important to talk about, is the entire segment with Ymir here. I think that this is a very bad segment, and it showcases the flaws that Isayama had as a writer at the end here. And let me explain. The problem Let him explain. Let him go. That Isayama turned a story about war and hatred and all of that into a love story. And it wasn't properly conveyed. Like, majority of the series, anyone that really takes a hard look at Attack on Titan, okay, let's just look at the, the entirety, the grand span of the anime and the manga. The story is about, at first, you know, humans trying to discover the world outside the walls, who are these titans, who sent them, what are they, etc., and trying to make it to the beach, make it to the sea, so to speak. And then they find out that there's humans across the ocean that are sending titans and stuff over to them, trying to kill them, eradicate them, and it's just basically bad blood between two factions for a very long time. I'm letting him cook, but I also have something to say, so I'm just letting him cook. And technically, no side truly knew the original origin point or history of how it really all started. They own, they had their own history, so to speak, of what really happened, and they were always back and forth, and just this bad blood could not be settled and they were killing each other one yeah. side had to be eliminated which is what led to the rumbling and why aram is like one side's got to go it's either our side or their side and flock as well that was you know chastised multiple times throughout the story technically was right in the end because if they would have finished the opposing side paradise wouldn't have died at the end credits just gonna say but anyways, the point I'm trying to make is, is that the story has always been about the cycle of hatred and just, you know, bad blood and how, you know, there will never be truly an end to conflict. But Isayama decided to change the story's main message to love. And I don't know if he changed it to love. I think it wasn't to be taken literal, but like the whole thing with Fritz and stuff, like to show her freedom, her like she's 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 liberated from King Fritz, I feel like that is what it should be taken as. Should it be so literal as to love? But then again, love could do a lot. Love could do a lot. Like, love is a very powerful fucking emotion. And the shit that love could push you to do and start wars, like, foundation of war could be love and shit. You know what I mean? There was no romance. They never showed any hints from Eren's side. We only understood that Mikasa is in love with Eren, but not the other way around. I mean, I can see where he's coming from. This is a, a deep, critical out, like, look into this. At least he's looking at this from this perspective, you know? But I don't think it's to be taken literal, this whole shit. Like, this this whole scene of, like, love and stuff. I don't think that's the, 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 how literal it should be taken, you know what I mean? Like, I think this whole scene's just showing her liberation from King Fritz. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that is, is what Ymir is about. That's, that's, and she's hot, too. Romance. Like, the whole thing here at the end. What? You're saying something so, so, so serious. And she's hot, too. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? What's wrong with that? Just to end a serious anecdote with something so fucking detailed. Someone even said in the chat, they said, she's hot, so it's all okay. But Aaron literally said think? in the army scene that he loves Mikasa and wants her to never forget him and love him forever. Yeah. Casa loving Aaron. Aaron never really got the say to her that like, he loves her. It was like love that just never was fulfilled between the two. But there was a mutual understanding, a bond there. But uh, basically, Aaron never said, I love you to Mikasa. Mikasa never really said it to him. And uh, that's basically it. And the whole reason why, you know, Mikasa was even destined to be alive, so to speak, was for her to bring down Aaron. Like, that was the whole role, that Ymir guided Mikasa to take down Aaron. And it turned into, like, a love story, so to speak. Like, the, the way the message is conveyed here is that it's a love story. That, you know, Mikasa will be the one to... The message is like that, is if you take it literal like that, I feel like. But I feel like with Attack on Titan, you can't just take things like that. Like, if you look at Attack on Titan through a very normal, basic lens, and I'm not saying Chibi's doing that. He's looking at th this through a, a reviewer very advanced lens but i'm saying like to a typical viewer if they're looking at the attack on titan through a basic lens it might come off like that but i feel like if you look at it deep like you do with the entire story you look at different things i feel like you you, you don't see it as literal as like romance that it's about romance and love and stuff in the suffering to end no wonder king fritz do be like that i'm really down oh my god bro. the the line and pain of like the the titans etc take down aaron take down her lover and all read the first comment on the video 
Ymir didn't protect her kids. She saved King Fritz. The panel is meant to represent what she should have actually done. It seemed pretty obvious, honestly. That's, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yep. MWNDJDDJDHBBF F8408, exactly. All that and just put an end to it all. And Where's just, Gothic, like, Mikasa? Kind of weird. So they retconned this. And as you can see here, this is basically King Fritz. And we get to actually see what really happened here. That King Did they retcon it? Fritz got stabbed by the spear. And let me get everybody up to speed for everybody remembers this, okay? So basically, what's going on with this brief little scene that happens here with Ymir and Mikasa kind of having a conversation is that King Fritz never was alive. Technically, Ymir didn't take that spear and die for him. King Fritz died. And Ymir was with her children. And what makes this a really bad sequence is because it's not confirmation if this is what Ymir wanted. Like, for instance, if this is a what if, like, you know, what could have happened if Ymir would have stepped away and allowed King Fritz to die. Isn't this like a what if scenario? Like the whole thing with Eren and Mikasa? But then people are saying the whole thing with Eren and Mikasa, that what if scenario, like, they're saying that's not even a what if. People are actually saying that's not a what if. That scene with Aaron and Mika's at the cabin and everything and everything's normal. They're not they're saying that's not a what if. This is literally a what if. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know what GB's trying to say right here. Or if like, you know, Ymir didn't actually die. And it, it's very called parallel timelines. I don't know if they're getting into multiverse shit. I mean, I know with the whole thing with Mika said with the gothic shit and all that, like I I don't know. I don't think they were showing us a multiverse. I don't think that was the the ending. I don't think that's what he was hinting at at all. I think it was more of a what if scenario. I think that's where my brain's leaning towards more. I don't think we're leaning into the fucking spider verse. Complicated because what this scene does is is it muddies the waters of like okay, if this actually happened and this was legit. Okay, let's just say this is the true history of what happened to King Fritz and Ymir did not die to the spear. That means the whole elements of, like, the 13 years of, like, you know, Titans, for instance, like, um, you know, the reason why there's a time limit on Titans and they can only live for a certain amount of time is because Ymir died after that long when she had the Titan. She died, and then it passed on to her descendants. And then also the reason why the, the her, you know, the children even got Titan shifting powers is because they ate their mother. That whole horrific scene that was in the manga and was kind of censored in the anime, but they ate their own mother because King Fritz forced forced his children and, you know, Ymir's children to eat her, to be able to pass on the genes of the Titan shifting powers. And that's kind of what led to the legacy in the... Maybe Chibi, he's looking at this through a what-if lens himself. Maybe he's speaking, what if this happened? Nah, I don't know. I think he, he misinterpreted the scene, which is fine. Like, if he knew this was like a what-if scenario, kind of, like, what if this happened? What if this is the route I went down? He would look at this differently? Because this is a big negative for him. This is what he said is a big negative. Cycles of Attack on Titan to be like it is throughout the entire story. So, if this is legit accurate, and King Fritz actually did die, and Ymir somehow lived, it's like, how did all the other stuff happen? What happened here? So... Yes, I know this is probably a message saying that this is what, you know, Ymir probably wanted, that she wanted yeah. this to happen. But the problem is, it's not properly conveyed. Not I think it is probably, pr probably, properly conveyed. Like, I saw this, and I knew, like, immediately what it was. I think it was conveyed perfectly. You know what I mean? Like, who watched this scene... Unless this is the first time you're watching Attack on Titan. You were confused. I mean, it, it, I, I understand. Like, people could be confused. But for me, I'm not the smartest person. I mean, Liv thinks I am. That's all that matters. I don't know what y'all think. But, like, I went into the scene. I knew exactly what it was. I didn't watch the scene. I was confused. Nani? Anime properly conveys this. And that is a huge flaw. Because it's left up in the air if this is the true history or not. Which does kind of play with the themes of Attack on Titan that, you know, you never know really what happened, but it's still very bad, especially for the final chapter. Now, another problem here is, is I never really dived into this one too much, even- Alright, so the first problem, I don't agree with him with. I feel like it was properly- prop Fuck! It was properly conveyed. I feel like it was perfectly conveyed. Like, I knew exactly what it was, what was happening on the screen. Confusing? It could confuse people, but then you just watch the scene over and you realize it. But I think it was properly conveyed.
it in my manga reviews for the ending. But another problem is, is that even if hypothetically we're wanting to believe- If you didn't like Chibi, you'd be hating on him. I, even if I didn't talk to Chibi, I like that he's going into depth with this. Like he's a deep thinker. And at least he's looking at it through like an advanced deep thinking lens. So even if I didn't like him, even if this is the first time I'm seeing him, I would respect him enough to listen to his opinion. I just don't agree with that take, like with that one take he has. That this is fake or whatever. The problem is, is that Ymir's love for King Fritz makes legit no sense. And, okay. We know that they had years together. And there probably was, like, a lot of honeymoon moments. Just beautiful moments between the two, most likely. But it is conveyed very toxically. And just, like, it's not a good relationship. Like, Ymir has Stockholm Syndrome. That's literally what yeah. is conveyed here. That the reason why she died for him was because of Stockholm Syndrome. She was basically his slave. And that's it. And she had children with him. That, that's yep. it. And so she never really loved him. She was just basically just Stockholm to just do that type of stuff. And we never get to see King Fritz's actual, like, personality. Like, all we know is that he's this very cruel ruler, so to speak. And he was very cruel to Ymir, cutting off her tongue and all that, just doing horrific stuff, so to speak, to her. We never got to see maybe his good side. And I feel like Isayama really dropped the ball there, is that if we would have gotten... I mean, I would have liked to see maybe something that attracted her towards him. But the thing is... Look at the modern day world, bro. You know how many girls are attracted to that toxicity? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you don't have to be a good guy to have somebody to love you. Sometimes people like the evil. Not saying she's a freak and she likes her tongue being ripped out and shit. That's not what I'm leading to. But what I'm saying is he doesn't even have to do good things for her. Like for some girl. You know what I mean? Some guys are attracted to toxic girls. It's toxicity can attract to people. You know what I mean? Like he doesn't have to do good things for her to like him. Some girls are like that. Some guys are like that. It's not just one way. What do I like? I'm not. I'm not attracted to toxicity. That's why I love Liv. She's the opposite of toxic. She's beautiful. In and out. Like like In and Out Burger. What? Uh, my pleasure. I'm King Fritz. And maybe I should cosplay as King Fritz, and Liv could be Ymir. On the good side, even some elements, even a panel. It would have humanized him even a little bit to allow us to understand why Ymir would even want to protect such a scumbag after doing what he has done and what he did to her very bloodline, her children, etc. It's really messed up, especially since we know she's been around for like 2,000 years. Seeing her children just killing each other, it's just like, what the hell? Like, yeah, she's a broken person, but it's like, it's really messed up, especially if her entire objective was to get Mikasa to the origin point to kill Eren. It's just, it's like, it's clear that she had a mind and she knew the problem, but it's like, why just not end the problem herself when she clearly had the power to do so? And why You could say that about a, what? a lot of things, man. You could ask yourself, like, why don't certain girls get out of relationships when they're being abused? You could ask yourself all that time, or like a guy, why doesn't a guy leave a relationship if he's clearly being taken advantage of? You know what I mean? You could ask yourself that. You, 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 everybody asks that. Like, why is this girl with this guy? He is a piece of shit. He is fucking terrible. Why is she with him? You could say the same thing with a guy. Why is this guy with that girl? She's taking advantage of him and his money, and he's a piece of shit. You know what I mean? Or she's a piece of shit. You could ask yourself that. But I feel like that's where Attack on Titan excels is that it's based off of reality. You know what I mean? Same thing with Eren. Like seeing him do the breakdown. He's just a normal guy. He's not this hero. Be better. You're a villain. Be good. He's not like that. You know what I mean? It's just normal. He's a normal guy. And I feel like it's the same situation with Ymir and King Fritz. Ymir is a normal person. That lives in reality. That lives in the real world. King Fritz and normal. Not saying these are based off real people. But it, it, you could say it is. It's based off of real people. J just regular people like you and me. Not like history or some shit. Why was she working with Aaron? It's just, there's a lot of things that become very complicated. If, you know, it's just Stockholm Syndrome or love or whatever. So, I wish Isayama would have given more details and information about king fritz and who he really was i don't think we needed the details i think happened. that was enough but uh anyways besides that we need to move into another segment and i respect his date bad. at least and he explained it historia historia as a character i'm just gonna i don't care about historia i think that's a criticism too like that's one of the negatives not negatives but like honestly like i don't i never cared about historia and i think she's so important that you should care 
but you're not given a reason to. Like, I personally don't give a fuck about Astoria. I never did. Gonna be completely blunt here. I'm just gonna show this scene here because I think that it's legitimately such a sad moment because Historia was a very powerful female character that became a ruler. She had a birthright, etc. She was up there side by side with Aaron. And obviously, Aaron's motivation was to kind of keep her out of this and all that, but she was really sidelined. There was, at the time when this was coming out in the manga, and even I saw anime discussion of it, there was a lot of discussion that maybe this child here that Historia had was Aaron's child. There was a lot of speculation, but there's this... Yeah, people are saying that's Aaron's child because uh, the, the kid's eyes are, are like Aaron's mom's eyes. Get the fuck out of here! That ain't Aaron's... That, that, that's, that's Farmer Joe's kid. Random no-name guy that she's with that doesn't really ever... Trader Joe's. We don't get information about that she has a child with. And obviously, she's trying to have a happy life. But it's just... His story was a completely dropped plotline. Like, her character was just yeah. completely dropped... And not really ever used ever again, really. Yeah, all I remember is, like, she punched Levi, became queen, went on a farm, fucked some farmer, and then and this happened. Like, that's all I know. After she became... You know, when they showed her, like, like after, like, Aaron and everything, I was like, uh, 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 look, it's, uh, it's Krista. Know who she really was. So it's just, like, sad how her character was. I agree with this. Because she I agree with this really take. got anything else to her character. Yeah, apparently she got the whole history and knew the future and stuff, but it's like, we didn't see her do any of that at all. Just yeah. the whole paradise got killed. We, we saw it at the end credits. So her character was wasted. Just straight up wasted. That's my two cents on the matter. I agree with that. I understand that. That's one of the criticisms I agree with. Um, does it affect that I think it's still like a fucking masterpiece? That I, 10 out of 10, like I love it? No. But I still have that criticism, like uh, Historia. I, I think Isayama didn't do a great job in making me connect with her. Like, she should be important. With what he's telling us about her, she should be top tier. But she's not. Instead, she's a long... Like, I, I care about Flegel more. Now, besides that, we also got to talk about, like, this final scene with Reiner. I, 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 gotta, I gotta show this. Oh, not the sniffing scene. Oh, my God. The manga, and I'm gonna do it here. <laughs> Reiner literally, as you can see here, he grabs Historia's letter... <laughs> And he sniffs it. This is the oh, last shit. scene Reiner is ever in for the anime and the manga. And his last thing he does is sniffs Historia's letter like a loser. Like he. All right, all right. You know what, man? I, I, I would have loved to see Reiner have a better send off. You know, like Reiner is my goat, and the last time I see him is him sniffing Historia's letter. I think that's a that's like I wish I would have seen him in a better position. But whatever, man. He he's done. He's done it. It's not like he hasn't done it before. You look at the earlier seasons. He loved Historia. He loved shit like that. Oh, I'm gonna marry her and shit like that. You know what I mean? He's. You could say he's returned back to his root, like his true self. You could say this is who he really is. He, he sniffs it. And it's he's a like, pervert. What? He's a hentai. Like, it's pathetic. It's it's legitimately pathetic. So <laughs> it's in the end. All Reiner was was a was a sniffer to see that Reiner's final scene just amounted to him sniffing letters. And this is a guy that had so much to where he's like, he just That's funny, though. That's there's funny. even so many scenes in this episode, <laughs> his final episode, where he's like, I just want to die pretty much. Oh, I could take yeah. the Colossal Titan's explosion, etc. It's oh, just man. like, this poor man was reduced to, I'm just gonna sniff letters. And never... <laughs> When you put it like that, man, when I saw it, I didn't have that reaction. I was just so happy. I was, I was so caught up in the moment. Like, I was, like, in disbelief that it's actually ending. We're in, like, the final ten minutes. So I didn't see, like, this scene like that until now. And now I'm listening to him. I'm like, wow, this is really the last time I saw Reiner. Holy shit. And he sniffed the letter. And then we never saw him again. Never have anything. He never even got with Historia. Nobody. No ass. Did he ever fuck? That's the question. Not a shipper by any means, and I'll get more into that in a second. But, I'm a um, shipper. It's very pathetic, and it comes off just very sad that this is the last. We have any 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 Armin shippers in here? Resorting to sniffing Historia's Armies. letter, and I just think that uh, for a character that's so iconic and entangled with the story, thanks to being the armored Titan. It's sad to see that this is his final moments. It's just like, really? I mean, he's no longer the Armored Titan. Now he's just normal Reiner. Back to sn sniffing letters. There could have been just so much better for his character, but this truly is It even smells good. Story. <laughs> so, yeah. But let's segue oh, over into John. That's I'm great. I'm going to make this one really quick, and I also want to make a brief disclaimer. John as a character, I, I don't hate him. 
And I also don't care that technically he ended with Mikasa. Because I... I... I don't get... People are telling me, Nick, um, how'd you miss that? Make, make us us with, with, with John. When the fuck does it imply that? I don't know. Did I miss something? I'm no shipper. I'm just... I want to keep this 100% real, okay? I'm not a shipper. I don't care who Mikasa ended up with, if it was Aaron or whoever. I, I didn't give a crap. I didn't. But... Isayama made this final episode and the final chapter very romance-heavy. Like, definitely wanted to imply that all of it was about love and romance and all that. So, basically, it's very important to talk about. And kind of the message behind it and what it means to the story. Aaron's entire objective is for Mikasa not to move on. Like, we saw him break down and say, no, I don't want that. I don't want her to move on. I don't want her to forget about me. I don't want her to get with anyone. And in a way, Aaron wins. She never does move on. He never... You were jumping when the slides went? Oh, I was too busy in my reaction mode when I was reacting to the episode that I missed a shot. It sounds like me. Or she never moves. Now I'm going to see it. And she continuously comes to his grave, has his scarf on. She's buried with his scarf. She delivers flowers to him. Wait, wait, yeah, yeah. I don't think that's his objective. Yeah. I don't think. I think Chibi misinterpreted a few times, and that's fine. I mean, like the whole thing with Ymir and stuff. But, like, I really respect and appreciate, like, his takes. And she even buries herself next to him. And so it's clear that she never moves on. Yeah. But the thing is, FYI, we know she gets with someone. Even in the anime, it shows it. But let me let me show you this scene. So basically, okay, this scene right here, right? This this is okay. Before he speaks, right? This is what I see, right? It could be interpreted that this is her and John's child. Even if that is John, right? It leaves you up to think. It leaves you up until like if like you're. You get to imagine the ending yourself. It leaves you up into imagination. It could be a bunch of other things. It could be, that's not even John. That's just some random guy that she got with and had a kid. That could be, or it could be, take number two. This is John and John's kid. And Mikasa is just holding John's kid. It's not even hers. It's just, maybe she's just a cool aunt or something. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's left up for interpretation. It's not telling you... They fucked, they're together, this is their child. Nowhere does it say that. It's just an interpretation at that point. I don't know, that's how I see it. At the end here, you literally see her with a kid, and it's very clear this is John. How do we know that? That could be any guy with a mullet and a hat. And she comes here to constantly just, you know, be beside Aaron's grave visit him etc with family friends whatever and the reason why i think that the this is really bad I'm, a, I'm over here like it's not that she's visiting him but the it's the same hair what you know how many people have the same hairstyle go to any high school go to i'm not gonna say go to a middle school that sounds fucking weird bro oh my god but go to any school you know how many people have the same hairstyle Japan? You know how many people have the same fucking hairstyle? You know how many people have my hairstyle? If they showed a back up, if they showed a picture of me looking at that tree with the back of my head, you would think it's either me or Kim Jong-un. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. The reason why she's visiting him is because she never moves on. She's buried with a scarf, and that's the whole s the significance here. Is that the fact that she still has the scarf on showcases that she still loves him. That's the whole point of the scarf. And so, the fact that she has the scarf on... While visiting his grave with John next to her and her kid, John is continuously reminded that... Why would Isayama that obvious if he didn't want us to interpret that way? I don't think Attack on Titan, he, he's doing things for you to clearly interpret something for that to be 100%. I, I feel like it's the ending, so he wants you to think. I don't know. The only reason why she is with Mikasa, like why he's with her, is because he, he won because he lived. Like, you know, she never would have chosen him. She never would have been with him. <laughs> she would have been with Aaron. But the only reason why, you know, she is with him is because he didn't die and Aaron died. But it's like, if it was clear as fucking day, I don't think anybody in the chat could tell me 100%, unless to some of you, Mikasa and John 100% are together and that's their child. Could you say that? Could you say 100%? Clear as day. As clear as my forehead is huge. 90% it ain't a hundred. It's not a hundred. So that means there's still 
I am Isayama, it's 100%. I can't believe he's fucking here, bro. Unless he says it himself. Someone ask Isayama, bro. Someone ask him in an interview. 98, that still ain't on it. Nobody can say 100. It's Mika's child, 100%. Why? Because she's holding him? And so thanks to circumstances, why he went. Is that 100% Mika's child? I don't think so. I don't even think this is like some weird... Uh, 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 um, um, theory. I don't, I don't know. I feel like he purposely wrote it for us to imagine it. People are saying, yeah, it's a hundred percent her kid. I don't know. Mika's just stole someone else's child. You could say that. Or she's just a cool, like she, that could be John and his kid. They came to visit. Mikasa was there and Mikasa is holding the kid because it's her best friend's child wins and it's a really awful feeling you know john has to feel very awful about it. or it's eisen's child and the fact that's also never tackled showcases one of the other fundamental flaws once again with romance and love with isayama and attack on titan for instance he's not good with love and romance it's very clear like the whole historia <laughs> stuff and king fritz to just now with john and mikasa to aaron and you know mikasa and then we have the stuff like the, the most organic one honestly I'm going to be honest, man. I think as far as romance and love goes, Isayama captured the reality of love perfectly. I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, I look at it differently. It's not clear as day. Love isn't as clear. It shouldn't be as clear. Love should be complicated. You know what I mean? Like, it would be different if something was defined as a romance. I don't know, man. Like, if I'm connecting with a movie about love, it's not going to be a romance movie. I'm not going into a romance movie trying to relate with it. A romance, like, I'll go into, like, a horror, not a horror movie, but, like, a, a, something like Interstellar. It's not romantic. It's not a romance. But I'll come out of that feeling something in my heart. Maybe feeling more romance in that than a romance film. The child could be adopted. Yeah. It could be adopted. It could be Aaron's leftover child. No, that wouldn't make sense. I don't even know. Or maybe... I don't know, bro. Maybe, maybe, maybe the baby was just hanging around too. Aaron knew the baby. The baby just crawled his way to the tree and now he's hanging up. It's just like, and it's not even that good, but Armin and just like Annie. The, the, it's the only somewhat okay one, but it's just like romance. Maybe Aaron made a baby friend. You don't fucking know. It's in this is not good. Like, Isayama, it's not a strong suit. And him, maybe it's... I'm kind of making the story around I that I, I definitely not go does there. not do justice. It, it definitely undermines a lot of things. I or I feel like degrades the quality of a lot of things. I agree with him with the Astoria take. Everything else, I don't. But I respect all his takes. So I just think that this take is really fucking note, Twitter. Bad thing to see John's also final moments as he dies to be with someone that's only with him because he wins. He didn't die, and Aaron's dead, and he's maybe the baby is Aaron. Maybe all along, Isayama was riding an isekai. And the baby is actually, yeah, exactly, Rudy from Mushuko Tensai. But it's Eren. It, it's, it's Eren reincarnated into a baby, and then Mikas is going to happen. I'm not even going to go there. Just bro. This is Oshinoko in the same world. I need it as well, and she never moves on. Ooh, that's, ooh, that's to feel bad. But uh, anyways, besides all of that, this is the end. Attack on Titan is over. A decade-long journey nada. has come to a close, and just think, a few years from now, there's going to be people... Yeah, who's to say that's even Mika's? So maybe it's some other broad with a red scarf. ...people that are going to watch Attack on Titan for the first time and start from the first episode <laughs> to the conclusion in a binge. And that's going to be probably a magical experience. And maybe I it's not even a kid. Maybe it was a doll. You never fucking know. Pictures, pictures speak a thousand words. That also makes 100% clarity basically impossible. Exactly. I wonder how they're going to feel about that. But um, love it or hate it, Attack on Titan has shaped the industry, and I'm going to miss it. I'm legit going to miss this. I'm going to miss this show. There's a lot of good moments sprinkled in, like the Levi's stuff and all that, because he's basically the old guard. I honestly feel about Attack on Titan that is, if nothing is continued after this, like there's no spinoffs, there's no story told in the, sim in the same world, I'm completely fine with that. That's how much I love this series. I'd rather it be untouched than forced into a spinoff and we could say that about marvel and, and, and star wars and all that shit or like look at john wick why the fuck are there spinoffs being made for john wick 
Do you think I fucking care about the hotel receptionist? And I go more into details in some of these other scenes. All that you can you can watch my mom. Now to make it a fucking prison break. Um, um uh, uh, there's a spinoff set in the prison break world. You think I care about the fuck it's prison break world? It's 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 the normal world. It's not the world. It's the characters we love. When will these corporations understand that? Why doesn't our spinoff work? It's because we don't care about these new characters. We don't care about the world. We love the characters. You think if you reboot Friends, people are gonna like it just because it's called Friends 2? No, we like the original cast. We don't care about the fucking ho the hotel kids. Review videos to talk about it. Like, I talk about some positive aspects of the final chapter as well. But yeah, this is a good episode. And the passion, effort, and love and detail that has been put into this series from start to finish, from episode one of season one to where we're at now, it's- Dude, the Warhammer got the dumpy. I didn't even realize that. It's insane. I'm really happy for Attack of Titan to actually have closure and all of its content animated. Closure. The conversation's just begun. <laughs> Holy shit. Those movies make money, Nick? Exactly. Exactly. They, if Isayama wouldn't do this, right? Imagine he made a show about Connie's mom. He wouldn't do that. Marvel would do that. Marvel would do that. It'd be called Rengoku Village. What the fuck is the village called? That's what it would be called. Tell me not. Marvel would do that. And that's where I respect anime. They know when to fucking stop. Ragako? Yeah, I said Rengoku. Right? Yeah, th th you know damn well Marvel would make a, vil uh, 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 a show called Ragako Village. And it's about that town. And where, where were they? And fuck, give a fuck about Connie. Think I care about his mom? <laughs>